Hello and welcome to the show. This is episode 22 of the Life of Gaming podcast. My name is Jamie and I'll be your captain on this cruise of video game awesomeness. And you all know my co-host, the Luigi to my Mario, Mr. Josh Brandt. There you go. Nailed it. That's right. How, you, how, how are you doing? doing, sir? I am doing great, sir. How about yourself? Oh, fantastic. You want to know why? And why is that, sir? Because I had pumpkin ice cream for the Ooh. first time. Wow. They got that flavor in at the cone. <laughs> Only the best soft serve ice cream oh, place awesome. in Cincinnati. There you go. And Hopefully yep. you get some free ice cream for that promotion, right? Because <laughs> we all know they listen to our that show. That would be amazing. Oh, that's I, I would be so fat though because oh my gosh. i could just eat that stuff non-stop oh exactly. dude that, that stuff is so good man i love when pumpkin flavor stuff starts coming mm. out Brittany, my wife hates pumpkin anything but oh, i man. pumpkin is awesome man i <laughs> oh so good <laughs> yes you cannot go wrong with pumpkin oh dude so good and like I, I, is it i'm trying to remember dairy queen i think they have that pumpkin pie blizzard awesome. oh yeah <laughs> yeah graders pumpkin ice cream oh so mm. good Oh man! Well, we can't really talk about pumpkin yet, man. Because honestly, I don't. I try to stay away from pumpkin stuff to like Octoberish, because then it's fall, you know, and you're in the mood for pumpkin stuff. But I don't care. I'll eat pumpkin right. if it's right on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> the great oh, pumpkin, dude. Charlie Brown, is that's... in the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's hilarious. So, I mean, what have you been up to? Anything exciting or new? I know it's only been a week. It's been a pretty, at least for me, it's been an extremely slow week at work. We've had people missing, so I've been like extremely busy helping everyone sort of keep up on their stuff. And it's just, oh, it's been times. a very busy week and my evenings have been, you know, slow. Although actually last weekend, uh, my wife and I, we went with her family, uh, her parents and her brother and his wife. And we went and saw Jim Gaffkin in Cincinnati, actually. That was a good time. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it was a good time. I mean, we actually saw him. I, I can't remember if it was last year, the year before. Remember the year before last? Maybe two years ago, we saw him in Cincinnati too. He's always hilarious, though. Jim Gaffkin's awesome. <laughs> yeah, check him out. <laughs> but what have you been up to, man? Anything exciting? Um, not really. Um, I have this awesome looking bling on my pinky because I had oh, to split right. it. It was it was you broken. Your finger, right? Oh, you actually <laughs> it was broke broken. It. He broke wow. it. <laughs> so your son is, it, is my powerful, yeah my finger man. wasn't getting any better and I was uh -huh. like uh, something's not right here so I just wow. decided to splint it and <laughs> yep prevent that flexion from happening so oh, hopefully dude, it heals up soon. That's crazy man. Well at least yeah. it was just your pinky and it's healing quick so that, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's just not stopping pinky. you from gaming right? Because I mean you don't need the pinky for right. gaming. <laughs> right. Holding that DualShock 4 though it's sort of a little awkward. Oh yeah. Or especially for the Vita but Sure. Oh yeah, with the, I had with to put the touch that on, on the hold back. a little yeah, bit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making do. Good, good. Well, as you guys know, we're in the middle of our summer game series. You know, we've been having a great time doing that. And today we're actually going to talk about Mario. And as you know, we've been bringing guests on each show to, you know, talk about their favorite games. And who better to talk about Mario than the host of the Warp Whistle podcast, Mark. Mark, how you doing tonight, sir? Thank you for it's joining us. It's a me. <laughs> no problem. That's, uh, thanks it's for having me on again. Fuck. It's great to be uh, great to be back, and I, I'm I'm excited to talk about some uh, some Mario stuff. Awesome. Like, is there anything exciting or new going on in your life right now? It's been a while since we've had you on the show, man. Yeah, it's been a bit. Uh, not uh, not too much exciting. Just you know, enjoying the summer as much as I can. Uh, Which is almost busy over. With it, almost over. I, I have know. one more week of vacation left uh, next week. Uh, actually, well, the week. No, two weeks from now. So um, this time next week, I'll be getting ready for vacation. I'll be that'll be really nice. Cool. Um, aside from that, just kind of keeping busy with uh, with the podcast and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's all good. Awesome. Well, I know you've had some really cool episodes recently. You had some interviews and stuff like that. Let us know since it's been you know quite a while since we've had you on the show. What's been happening with the podcast? Uh, yeah. Well, recently uh, we had. Uh, a couple of developer interviews, like indie developers on the show, which is really cool. So we had uh, Klaus from Zoink Games. Uh, so they're releasing, uh, they're, they're the guys that made Stick It to the Man. Uh, if you haven't played that game, it's it's absolutely hilarious, really cool. Like, uh, kind of reminded me of like the old, like Grim Fandango, Full Throttle, like the old kind of, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you, you have a problem, you need a certain item, you have to go figure out how to obtain that item and then go back and solve the problem. Uh, that it's kind a great of stuff. game. That it's game is so fun. It's so fun. Really, it's, uh, it's yeah, awesome. Really well written game. It's a uh, really, 
really a blast to play. Um, so if you haven't played that, it's it's out for I think pretty much everything right now. I think right? so. Yeah, the, the I've Wii got U it on the I, I bought it on the Wii U because I think it came out there first. But um, Brent, you've got it on PS4, don't you? No, I don't. Oh, I thought you did. No, buy it I on play, PS4. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Buy. I can't. I game. can't wait for the Zombie Vikings game. Oh yeah. And I was, and I was just gonna say. So we we talked to them about uh, Zombie Vikings, and that's one of the uh, the games that's vote to play on uh, on PS4 mm-hmm. right now. So if you haven't gone to vote, if you have a PS4, PS3, uh, whatever it is, go vote to play. Um, that game looks awesome. It, it looks like. Um, Kind of a cross between stick it to the man, like with the art style and uh-huh. the humor and that kind of stuff, but it plays like uh, it looks like, like Castle Ca- Crashers. Saying, it looks like Castle Crashers, like a four player yeah. beat 'em up kind of thing. Oh, that's so yeah. right so it's, there. It's really cool. I watched a, a great Twitch stream yesterday. I don't know if you guys caught it, but they they played through a couple of levels. They they did for a solid hour. They uh, they just kind of played the game and talked about it and and had fun. And there were three of them playing at the same time, and it was like you know one of them. I, instead of dying, you kind of just lose your head, uh, and so your your little zombie head just kind of like staying on the stage, like huh. like spewing out like grossness, and uh, and one of your teammates has to come over and reattach your head to your body, but you can also just be a jerk and throw it off the stage. So it was really uh, kind of funny to watch. So, so you like, don't oh, die until your head dies, then is what you're saying. Exactly. That's yeah. hilarious. That's yeah. really funny. I like that. It's pretty it looks pretty cool. So I am I'm really looking forward to playing that game. I hope it wins the uh, the vote to play thing. Uh, I think right now they're in second place, so cool. every vote counts. Uh, yeah. and there's still some time to vote. But uh, anyway, I you know I, I'm excited to play that game. It, it looked really, really cool and then Klaus was really great to talk to. Um, and then we had, uh, recently we just had Aiden Price from, uh, from they're, they're developing a game called Lost Sea Games. He's from East Asia Soft is the, uh, the software company. Um, so they're over in Hong Kong and, uh, and they, that game's coming out for Xbox one, PS4 and PC. So it was a little weird oh, okay. to have him on our podcast. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's coming out later. <laughs> he said later in, uh, this year. So it should be out before, you know, before the holidays or whatever. But that was for um, his love of Splatoon. That's why we had him on the show, and, right? And you know what? That yeah, we had him on for the, his love of Splatoon, and that's really how we got started talking. Uh, before you know, before he even said let's let's do the show, uh, we just started talking about Splatoon and that kind of stuff. And it was like, man, you you got to come on and talk about Splatoon. And he was like, I don't even care if I mention my game. I was like, you got to mention your game. Come on, <laughs> put it out there because it, right. it looks really cool. <laughs> it's all about uh, you're you're kind of stranded in the Bermuda Triangle, and you have to go around and see who else is there and collect your crew and. Huh. and build like a ship and and figure out kind of how to get out and that kind of stuff and the trailer is kind of like at first you're just kind of like okay all right this looks kind of like you know just fairly simple right build up your ship build up your crew and and take off it's like okay cool and so you go out like the right side of the bermuda triangle and then they come back in the left side and it's like or not <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, so it looks uh yeah, it looks neat. It looks like it has some some cool little twist to it and they said they play with that like obscure kind of weird mythos of uh of the bermuda triangle so uh so two yeah two really cool interviews i was i was really lucky to uh to get those both and get them both really quickly in a row so it was kind of overwhelming a little bit to uh (laughs) to be like oh right we go from like my brother and i like talking in a basement to um to like doing these interviews with like someone in Sweden and someone in Hong Kong. And it's like, what? But it, it, you know, <laughs> it was cool. You know, it's, yeah, it was really neat. They're so, really good episodes, man. That was, that was yeah, thanks. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on the show, man. Hopefully you have a good time tonight and you don't feel like you're, you know, wasting your evening. <laughs> oh, not at all. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here. And I, you know, love talking about Mario. We, you know, we're, we're a Nintendo focused podcast at the warp whistle and, and uh, and we never get sick of talking about Nintendo for the most part. I, I think so far we've done one Nintendo episode where I wanted to talk about Destiny. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> Colin wanted yeah. to talk about The Witcher Three, and we were just like, okay, let's take a Nintendo break, and we couldn't wait to get back into it the next week. We were like, okay, sure. n- more Nintendo. So any chance I get to talk about Nintendo and especially Mario, I am more than happy to be here, and I was, I was very excited for you guys to. Uh, to invite me back and as soon as you said like hey do you want to come talk about mario i was like yes <laughs> not even a question what do you yes think? it's been on my schedule it's been on my calendar so i'm pumped to be here so uh yeah thanks for having me awesome well Sweet. with that guys we're gonna hop into our news section and what we like to call 
Captain's Log. Okay, today I guess we'll start off with the PlayStation news. Uh, since, Mark, you were already talking about this a little bit. This week, PlayStation has started uh, their voting for PlayStation Plus. And, uh, Brant, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on with that? Okay, well, it's their, their official headline is Vote to Play. You have to be a PS Plus subscriber to do this, but they have three games that you can vote for. One is Armello, which... It looks really interesting. It's like a hybrid of tactical um, cardboard or cardboard car, card battle, <laughs> card battle, right. board when you're game. A kid, you it fight has a like a whole right? There's a little cardboard like yeah, paper you towel know the cardboard roll, house. Right. Is right. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's pretty awesome because it mixes awesome. all those genres together and it has a really unique art style. Um, they have a short trailer you can watch for each game, so you should check those out if you want to vote. And then they have Grow Home which I guess was, it got really good reviews for when it came to PC. And I watched the trailer for it and it looks, it looks pretty fun. Lots of platforming goodness there, I guess. So, and then the last one is zombie Vikings, which, um, as what Mark said, he interviewed the guys from there. Definitely check games. that out. Yeah. Yeah. And I really like the art style of that. That's the one I voted for actually. Yeah, it looks like a blast. Yeah, if it's anything like Castle Crashers or any, you know, any good beat em up, then I'm all for that. So, yeah, you can place your vote and you can actually change your vote in the 10 days that this is going on. So, if you change your mind, you can always go back and switch it. But, yeah, yeah after that time period on September 1st, they will announce which game won and then that for that month you'll get that game for free and the other two will be on discount cool. i don't know if the second place game will be have more of a discount than the third but yeah I oh mean, yeah that's a good point i didn't think about that be, i mean that'd be interesting but yeah i mean it's a it's a good deal all around so make sure you vote and yeah zombie vikings of course cool <laughs> well, hey, hey mark they, I, yeah I, with, with zombie vikings I know they're making a big deal about it for PlayStation. Is it coming to Xbox One at the same time, or is it more of a, like a staggered release, or is it like just uh, PlayStation exclusive right now? I think right now it's PlayStation PC. Okay. I, I actually think it may be coming to PlayStation first, Got it. PC later, Xbox One. I think really, I think they're they're doing the same thing. I think with stick it to uh, stick it to the man, you know, they they're a new developer. They have to kind of pick and choose what the, where they release their games. Sure, so I think yeah. uh, PS4 is actually first. And I don't know if that's part of their deal with this uh, this vote to play kind of thing. Okay, I'm not yeah, really sure. I, I have no idea. We didn't really even get into that because we didn't know about the vote to play stuff um, when we did the interview. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's something I'm not really sure. But I, I, I know... They are staggering the release a bit, but I think it's coming out for, for everything eventually. Awesome. And that, like I said, that game looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. If I had a PS4, that's the one I would be voting for. <laughs> yeah. Grow I mean, Home is by Ubisoft, actually, Yeah, I was going to say, I, I saw the know. Grow Home stuff actually looked pretty cool. Which, yeah, uh, Grow Home, if that I think, wins... is in, in first right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, if that, if that one wins, I wouldn't mind just because I like games that do something different from, like, big publishers. But Sure. Yeah. Now, is it, the vote... Is the voting always going to be on like brand new games, or are they going to have like older titles in there maybe in the future? Or have um, they that's really a question. That? There's been a lot of speculation that hopefully they're not like cutting down the list because usually you get six games free mm -hmm. between all three of the PlayStation platforms, and they say that maybe they might just be going down to one. But I I oh. highly doubt that. I think usually with the PS Plus free games, you get one game that's just brand new that just comes out as free. Like Rocket League was last month. Okay. And then I forget what game was the month before, but I think that's what they're doing with this game. And then they'll have just another release that was out before for free. Yeah. I'm, and, I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere that they have confirmed that they're like doing the regular kind of thing. Like this is going to be the big game. Like you said, there's always one big game every month. Right. Uh, and then there's like, you know, the, the other, like the older games or, or, you know, kind of whatever it is, but, uh, the, I'm pretty sure I can't remember exactly where I read it, but I think they've confirmed that like this, this isn't it. There are the regular lineup of games. This is just vote for which, which one's the big new one. 
Oh, that's awesome. great. Yeah, I mean, I really hope that's something that maybe even Xbox does sometime in the future, because I think that's a really cool idea. It kind of shows the developers and Xbox or and PlayStation, everybody else, what the fans want, what kind of games are interested in, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, I know with with Xbox now, I mean, they only do one game per well, they do two games per month on each system, but now they said that everything that they have for Xbox 360 is going to be backwards compatible on Xbox One. So technically on Xbox One, you're going to start getting four games a month, which is nice, although two of them are older. So, But, uh, I mean, talking with both you guys before the show, this week has been like the slowest news week in video <laughs> game history. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so there, there's not really much to talk about. Uh, I just saw a news story saying that Sony has announced that they will make a major PlayStation 4 announcement when they air the PlayStation Experience coming up, that you know that big Ooh. conference they're having, uh, do you know when that is, Brant? When the conference is happening? I think I, I I read recently that it's in December. Oh, okay. December fifth through eighth. Okay. I think. Huh. Well, so it's do not some major for a while. It's a while away, but man, hopefully they come out guns blazing because oh, it's absolutely. been pretty dry for them with Xbox getting all the press right now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm sure they'll. At the Paris game event and this one, they'll more than make up for it. I just looked it up really quickly. It's December 5th and 6th. Okay. Okay. Wow. And so oh, they're, was... they're announcing now if they're going to make an announcement in December. That's a pretty good ways off. <laughs> Big it's, announcement. It, yeah. It's, Who knows? It's strange. And it's it's after uh, after that holiday rush. Or, right. You know, well, maybe it'll be about Uncharted. The... I mean, do we have an, rele- an actual release date for Uncharted yet? No. I didn't they're... think so. Although that brings me up to a new rumor. Um, Uncharted 4 on an Amazon Germany listing, they had it listed as March 9th, 2016. Hmm. Yeah, I could see that. So maybe at that December places experience, they'll say, here's what, here's what Uncharted 4 is coming out. I mean, maybe they'll announce it before then. I mean, with the, like Mark was saying, the holiday rush, they want to sell consoles. They want to get people excited. Maybe that December 5th might be a little too late with people already, you know, starting to do the Christmas shopping and all that. So who knows? We'll see. Who knows? But uh, on the Xbox side, I mean, I looked and dug, and there's really hardly anything on the Xbox side. Um, um, to go back to oh, the PlayStation, sure, they did release the July sales, the NPD charts for that. Oh, okay, with the console, what's console sold the most, and PlayStation Four was actually on top again and led sure. in software sales, which I thought was interesting because of all the news, which I guess it's more recently, but all the news about Xbox, yeah. And the rare replay, I thought mm-hmm. that they might have the edge, but I think over the holiday season you might see a shift more towards Xbox, just because those big exclusive games uh-huh. that they've been hyping up are coming around out of around that time. Sure. Well, with rare replay, um, I was actually on the Digital Nerd Advocate podcast this week, and, I, and we were talking to, or I was talking to Corey on there, and he was talking about rare replay and how he had a really hard time finding it. Um, he really wanted to play it, and he wanted to have a physical copy, and he couldn't find one anywhere. He said it was really hard to find. So, I mean, I, although I know most people are going the digital route anymore anyway, but it's a, you know, the game is like 50 plus gigs, so it takes a while to install. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a good game. But uh, on the Xbox side of news, there's really not that much. Like I said, I kind of dug trying to find anything I could. <laughs> but really, the only big Xbox kind of news out there, EA has said that they're going to start adding xbox 360 backwards compatible titles to the vault so if you have ea access which i think is 30 or 40 bucks a year and you get all those ea games you can play them all you know as long as you're part of that membership kind of like a playstation plus or an xbox live account um and they're going to start adding xbox 360 titles to that so that's pretty cool that'll just add more games to play uh you know more free stuff so that's a good thing free stuff is always good that well i mean I consider it free. I mean, you're paying a $30 membership, but if you think about all the games you get to play, like my brother-in-law, Matt, who's normally on the show, he's been playing Madden like all week, and he got it for free <laughs> because he's part of EA Access. So he paid 30 bucks, but he's playing Madden, he's playing Dragon Age, he's playing all these games, and you only had to pay one fee for the entire year. That's the yeah, same. That's... I mean, it's the same as anything, right? Like, yep. I, I just had this conversation with my fiance before. I was saying, no, my, my PlayStation Plus, I was, I've been looking for a deal. You know, they always go on sale in different places and that kind of stuff. And, and my, uh, my Plus expires in about a month, midway through September. Okay. So I'm starting to look now, right? And I'm, I'm keeping my eye out on different things. And, and I was like, oh, man, I, I need one of these things. And she's like, what is this? You got to, you know, buy it every year kind of thing. And I was like, yeah, you know, all those free games I get a month. This is what, what it is. And she was like, so you pay for it. So it's not free. 
<laughs> okay, I guess so. Like, <laughs> all right, smarty cats. <laughs> but at the same uh, time, but, you think you know, the money's going into the online servers and all that other stuff too. So that's it, right? Like you're, you know, what is it, forty, fifty bucks a month, whatever, or a, a year, year whatever it is. Um, yeah, I mean, you the the amount of games you're getting, the online experience, all that kind of stuff. It's it's worth it for me for sure. Oh, totally absolutely worth it. I mean, at first it was kind of annoying. Like I was thinking, oh man, you have to pay for. I mean, it was kind of weird at first when you had to pay for Xbox Live. I mean, they had better they had, like the servers, and the online experience was much better than the 360 and the PlayStation. But now there's so much more packaged into it. It's not just the online experience; it's the free games and all the mm-hmm. different services and stuff you get. So I feel like that money you're paying, it's it's much more worth it now than it ever used to be. Well, I'll say like you know. I know we're talking about Mario and I know I love Nintendo and I know I have a Nintendo podcast, but I got to say that's probably the weakest part of Nintendo's structure. Uh, Some of the games work, work well, like Splatoon. I've, I've had really good luck with Mario Kart for the most part. I've had good luck with smash brothers. Not at all. I find that's just, you know, uh, really spotty, uh, especially with such a, a fast paced kind of game. And when you see, those games compared to something on Xbox or PlayStation, but especially Xbox, you know, you realize where this extra money's going and you realize like, you know what, if Nintendo had a paid platform where you could get even virtual console games Mm -hmm. or whatever it was like, you know, Netflix for virtual consoles style thing, plus, you know, pay for their online. I, I would throw money at my TV in a, in a second, like just, you know, shut up and take my money, Nintendo. Like, just <laughs> seriously, right? You know, so any of these kind of services that you know, Xbox Live, uh, PlayStation Now, where it's like you know, you get free games. I actually do count that as free games because I figure yeah. you know, the, my money, like you said, is going towards that infrastructure, and the games are just an added bonus to to kind of make it competitive, right? And that's uh, yeah, that that's that's my look on it anyway. Absolutely, and I agree. Like with Smash Brothers. Of all the games, like it, it's got lag in it. It's got um, it, when you try to voice chat with Smash, it's so staticky you can't hear each other. It's really annoying. <laughs> oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh, the Smash there's is still no awesome. voice Smash is still a great game, but they really absolutely. have to work on their internet. Yeah, and the, I mean, there's no voice chat at all in Splatoon, so that's you know. The- <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's true. Although when I play Splatoon with friends, I normally we get on Skype and we just talk over that anyway. Although yeah. I haven't played any like of the update where you can actually play with your friends on the same team i haven't touched that yet uh the only online i've done is re- with the older one where if you had friends on your list they would hop in the same room but you wouldn't yeah. necessarily be on the same team yeah that always annoyed me uh <laughs> i like i like this new one better I, I played around with a bit last weekend but but didn't really uh put too much time into it but you know and, and I know that, you know, a lot of people use Skype and a lot of people even, I know people that even go on PS4. So they use their PS4, go into a party chat and then play Splatoon. And it's like, <laughs> wow, that's it's, funny. It's 2015. Right. Almost 2016. Get your crap together, Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they will with the NX. We'll see. You never know. Maybe. But actually, maybe. speaking but of Nintendo... We, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Maybe. Oh, no. I was just going to say, we, we shouldn't have to find these workarounds. I know right. they work, but they're annoying. Right. And, right. That's, yeah. So we'll see what happens with the NX. I mean, it's 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 right around the corner. Uh, well, at least we think it is. We don't really know. Nintendo's being kind of secretive, so we'll see. But the next major release for the Wii U, because they really don't have that many this year. I mean, they, the one I'm about to talk about, Super Mario Maker, comes out September 11th. After that, um, we've got Yoshi's Woolly World. Is that out in Canada yet? I know it's out in the U.K., no, it comes out here the same time it comes out for the okay. States. So we got it's that in October. North America release. And then we've got Devil's Third, which probably no one's going to play. And then we've <laughs> got Xenoblade Chronicles X. Like, that's it. For the rest of the year, that is it for Wii U. Those but, are some um, good games, they, though. They are some Minus good games. Minus Devil's Third. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with Super Mario Maker, they just had a video come out. And it was about eight minutes, seven, eight minutes. And it felt like it was probably supposed to be a Nintendo Direct. Like, the way they set it up, the way they broke up the video into pieces, like, create, play, share, amiibo support, like, it felt like it should have been Nintendo Direct with someone talking in between. Um, and they probably just, after what happened to Iwata, they probably just, you know, stuck all this together and just made a video. But a lot of good information came out of it. 
Um, we, you know, they already they showed us how to make levels again, which you already knew about. They showed us how you can like shake an enemy or an item as you're placing it, and it'll turn into something else, which is pretty cool. But they also announced that you'll now be able to make your own sound effects and visual effects in your levels, which I could see that going horribly wrong <laughs> because you record your voice or whatever you want to record to be a sound effect. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, right. They also said you can make your own music in the game, but it's kind of like what you do with Little Big Planet, um, where you you had to sort of like intricately design this machine to play the music because each musical note block, how high it is, plays a different note, kind of like if, as if it's not a musical scale. So Mario is running through a level as like these shells are bounced up and down on these musical note blocks, and it was making music. So you can actually make your own music. It would just take you know a good amount of time. And they also showed that it's going to, they originally in the video, they said it was going to support over 50 amiibo. But since the video, they said it's actually going to support 70 amiibo. So almost every single amiibo out there now is going to be supported. So that's nice. And the six people that own them all are going to be really happy. Right, exactly. And it, <laughs> it really doesn't do that much. I mean, it's kind of cool. We, you know, we saw previews of it before. If you have a regular Amiibo, like a Smash Brothers Amiibo or one of the Mario Brothers series Amiibos, it turns Mario into that character. It only works in the 8-bit Mario, though, so it only works in the Super Mario Brothers mode, but you could turn him in, you know, into Wii Fit Trainer or Link, or you could turn him into Bowser, you know, whoever. It becomes an 8-bit sprite, which is really cool. Uh, the actual, I don't know if you guys saw it or not, but it's a, it's a special 30th anniversary Mario Amiibo. It kind of looks like uh, the pixelated Super Mario Brothers Amiibo. Uh, that one, it's specially made for Mario Maker, and if you use it in the game, then it makes like these super mushrooms where Mario gets like super, super big when he eats it, and all the enemies get get mustaches and Mario hats put on them. <laughs> it's really strange, but I mean, you know, that's just some of the news that, that that's come out. That that Mario Amiibo, that 8-bit one, yeah. looks so good. It does. If, oh man, if that one's hard to get, like, I just, I just had the, like... The most difficult time trying to get that retro three pack. Oh, you, oh, you actually got that order then? I got it. I got it. Oh, you and have it? Wow. Well, it's but already it took, out there. Okay. Yeah. It, it, so it, they they went on. They did like pre orders. Yeah. Uh, and it was GameStop and well in Canada that's EB Games are the same mm -hmm. company, and uh, so it was only in store. The closest store to me is like four hour drive away, so oh, wow. that wasn't going to work, and so you know they said it went up online and. It was sold out in like a minute or something stupid like that. So I kept every like every chance I got, I kept refreshing the page, yeah. you know, go on it. And the other day I woke up and for some reason, I never ever do this, on my way down the stairs to start getting ready in the morning, like I'm on my way to the shower and I refresh the page on my phone and it says pre-orders are back up. Wow. I was like why did I even just check that? Like that was some kind of like, <laughs> Cha -ching. Right, yeah, right. I don't even know. Like, and so I, I jumped on my computer and I hit the order and I, I did all that and then scrambled, you know, to get in the shower and all that right. kind of stuff uh, right afterwards. Um, but I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I, and it was sold out apparently like 15 minutes later or something like that. Once, once kind of word got out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, like they're so hard to get, and if that eight bit Mario is that hard to get, I'm gonna lose my mind because I need <laughs> that one. It, it comes in two flavors, by the way. It comes in classic Mario and like a new age Mario. So one's more like the brown and darker red, and then one's like the blue and red. Yeah. So yeah. It, we'll, I want we'll see. at least one of them. I don't care if I need if I get both. I'm not that sure. bad of a collector. Right. Like. You know the the retro pack. It's kind of funny because I kind of I gave up long ago on trying to get every single amiibo. So did I. Yeah. One, it's it's just hard on the wallet, and two, they're too hard to get. Exactly. So it will go insane. I, but I did say, you know, I needed the Duck Hunt dog because oh, Duck Hunt okay. was always one of my favorite games. Uh, I love playing as a Duck Hunt dog in the new Smash Brothers. I think I hear the uh, Duck Hunt dog. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> that's my little Duck Hunt dog. That's Stella. She's uh, she's making a ruckus. There's right, a right. dog barking next Laughing door, and she uh, <laughs> she doesn't like that. Uh, yeah, she doesn't she doesn't laugh at me uh, right. uh, quite as much as the Duck Hunt dog used to. Um, but uh, yeah, so I I like I needed that one. So that was when they said it's only available in the retro pack. I was like, okay, fine, whatever, I'll get right, it. Right, yeah. But uh, then they said it's only available in a store that's four hours away, and oh, I was man. like, oh, all right. Right, so, 
Yeah. Right. And, and that is kind of weird that they are, they're sort of forcing you to buy three. Like if you just want the duck hunt dog or like, let's say I just wanted Mr. Game and watch, you can't pay the normal $12. You have to pay what? 35, 40 bucks and get all three. You kind of have to, uh, I, they make sense to bundle together because they're all from the eighties, you know? So, I mean, it, I guess it makes sense to bundle them together. It's just kind of frustrating. Um, when I was looking at all the Amiibo coming out, the only one I still really want is Olimar. Um, just because I don't think there's ever going to be another Pikmin collectible ever. <laughs> and I really like the Pikmin series, so it would be nice to kind of, you know, get Olimar. I mean, it's the same reason I got, um, like, I'm trying to think, like, I got a Wario and some other ones just because I know there'll never be another collectible like that again. So I, I'd really like to get Olimar. That would be awesome. Yeah, do have you do you have the uh the little Pikmin plushies? No, I do not. I've never seen those. Oh man. I I'm going to I I got to see if I can like find those cuz I got <laughs> You got to see there these you things. Go, They're James. adorable. Right. I mean, I love Pikmin and Pikmin's one of those it it's so underrated. Like that series is so good, but no one plays it. <laughs> I completely agree. So hopefully they keep that series going in the future with the NX, we'll see. But I don't know. But uh, to get over into the multi-platform news, once again, there's really not that much. Um, some news came out about Fallout 4. They said that you can beat the whole game without crafting a single item. They said it's not necessary in the game, but it's there if you want it. Man. And a lot of the, of the stuff in Fallout 4 seems to be that way. They said the same thing about building your own towns and bases and things like that. You don't have to do it. It's just there. And Brant, I don't know about you, Man. but I think me and you... We're the kind of people that, because it's there, we're going to do it. <laughs> oh, I'm so micromanageable. I know. <laughs> but, man, every time you break news about this game, it just keeps getting better it does. and better. I Absolutely. Mean, it's like this game can do no wrong. Like, if it does something bad, it's like everyone's going to freak out or something. I mean, right. <laughs> it's, it's become... It's going to be the sensation of this year as far as gaming's concerned. I mean, Metal Gear Solid V, I have that pre-ordered. I can't wait to play that. But in the back of my mind, it's just like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for Fallout 4. Right, right. Man, and see, I've got, I've got Gears Remaster coming at the end of the month. And then I've got Halo in October. So I've got two games coming before Fallout 4. But at the same time, I'm thinking... All I want to play is Fallout 4 because I yeah. know once I get that game, I'm not going to play anything else for a very long time. Yeah, that's that's all you need. <laughs> that's right. Mark, are you a Fallout guy at all? I'm just curious. Uh, I played the last one. Never really played like the first couple. Um, I, I get into them, but w with those big games, I find I'll, I'll get into them and then I'll really kind of my ADD will kind of kick in and I'll start just going off on side quests and never finish the main one, and then I just flitter off to a different game as I usually do. Got it. Uh, so I, <laughs> I like those games. They're cool. Uh, I, I, I did did put a, a good amount of time in the last one on on the 360. New Vegas. And, uh, yeah. Okay. And, and I'm looking forward to, um, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to the new one. I and I've been putting a considerable amount of time into uh, Fallout Shelter, which oh, okay. just uh, just yeah, got released for great. Android for any oh, Android yeah. listeners you guys might have. Um, Never coming to Windows Phone. Bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Windows I forgot phone. you the Windows Phone. Oh man, I love the uh, Windows Phone, but there's like hardly any app support. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that just got released. Um, and I've been really enjoying that game and, and putting a decent amount of time in it. I'm, I'm really cool. looking forward to Fallout 4. Awesome. Uh, the only other thing I have written down for multi-platform news, they just announced that they're going to remaster Resident Evil 2. Uh, and Brant, you got the Resident Evil 1 remaster, right? Oh, yeah. And I also heard they're doing Zero. So pretty much 1, 2, and 0, or 0, 1, 2, I guess. They're all going to be remastered. I think Zero's coming in February. It's like right around the beginning of the year. And so mm -hmm. I'm assuming Resident Evil 2 will probably come like next summer. But, right, um, if that. But those games are so awesome good. News. I, I, love, I mean, yeah, Resident yeah, Evil. Yeah, that remake if they go up was to four, so good. I'm good. If they go up to four and stop, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah, they don't have to remake six, four. They do not redo this. No, no. But yeah, the, I mean, it's more great news. I mean, Resident Evil 2 is largely considered the greatest Resident Evil. Right. So if I they mean, just do what they did with Resident Evil 1, I'll be happy. Right. And honestly, 4 is my favorite, but I know 2 has a lot of love behind that one too. Uh, yeah. 
But uh, real quick, to hop out of the news, we're going to just talk about our budget section real quick and my two cents. There's really not that much. A lot of it is exactly the same as last week. I'll just hit some some of the newer stuff. Right now, Best Buy announced uh, for the, over the next week, you get a free copy of Destiny or Assassin's Creed. You get to choose one if you buy a PS4. So if you're looking for a PS4 or want some extra games, and that includes bundles and all that too, so you can get a free copy of Destiny or Assassin's Creed. I know Destiny has all that DLC coming out soon, so it might be a good time to hop on that. You know what? I gotta, uh, I'll interject there for a sure. second as a big Bungie fan. Um, the, the Taken King pack that's coming out in September, there is a really good deal on that just anyway. Like okay. if you spend, I think it's like 60 bucks and you get everything, including the new DLC, which is like 30 or 40 on its own. Oh, okay. So that seems like a really good package if you get like the base game free, but then you'd have to buy all the DLC right. anyway. Yeah, that makes sense. So it might be better off to go with Assassin's Creed hmm. if you plan on buying the DLC for Destiny anyway. Sure. And I actually thought about doing that because uh, Corey we had on last week and we've you know had some other friends that they just play Destiny, constantly playing Destiny. Yeah. And I felt like I'm falling so far behind on it. But now, like you said, 60 bucks, I can get the full game with Nolan North redoing all the vocals. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Wait, well, by the way, what do you think of that? What do you think of, of Dinklage getting kicked out of the game? Uh, it makes sense. I mean, I, I love Peter Dinklage as an actor. Uh, Game of Thrones, he's awesome. I haven't seen Pixels yet because I've heard it's terrible, but right. you know, I'm sure <laughs> he's at least good in it. But uh, and I didn't find him as terrible as most people did in the in the first like you know vanilla Destiny. But I did notice a big absence in the like the the couple of DLC packs that came out. Okay, and you know it, it, he's a he's a Hollywood actor. He's got a busy schedule. He's probably expensive to get in, especially yeah. now. Like you know, maybe I'd say when they recorded the original Destiny, that could have been years ago. Sure, sure. You know, even before Game of Thrones really took off. So, you know, they could have got him cheap the first time, and then you know his his asking fee kind of went up by millions of dollars. So. You know, to get someone like Nolan North, who's a professional voice actor, knows the video game world, can bring a lot to it, and is most likely, you know, not quite as busy as Dinklage, you know, probably just sure. a phone call away to yeah. go record a couple of lines. Um, I think that's a smart move, and I, I understand completely re-recording it. I mean, I guess with the new DLC, they could have, like, you know, had the ghost get bumped or something, then he, like, rebooted and had oh, a different sure. voice. Right, right. Yeah, they could have done something cheesy like that, but, yeah. you know, you might as well have a cohesive unit. So, like, you know, someone like yourself, you start off and you pick that, uh, your guardian, and you, you know, you, you get revived in the start. I don't think that's a big spoiler. Uh, <laughs> and, you I was know, actually you, in the beta, so I played a lot of Oh, there you go. The beta, yeah. yeah. So, you know, you, you start off with your Guardian and uh, and it's it's Nolan North the whole time through. And, and I, I, apparently they're going to re-record the dialogue, add more, and keep it going through the DLC and, yeah, and into the yeah. future. I'm on board with it. I like it. And, I, I, cool. you know, I like his past roles. And I think he's going to bring something cool to, the, to this one. Awesome. Um, and, and that's pretty much... Well, I guess one other thing on the PlayStation side, if you are a fan of the Devil May Cry series, right now on PSN... They're having a Devil May Cry sale this week. You can get the DMC uh, remaster for twenty four bucks. You can get Devil May Cry Four remaster for nineteen bucks. So those are those are pretty cheap right now. Um, over on the Xbox side, really not that much going on. Uh, same deal as last week over at the Microsoft Store. If you purchase the Master Chief bundle over there, you get the Assassin's Creed Unity for free and a, a year of Xbox Live for free, all for three hundred and fifty bucks. Normal price of a console, so that's pretty cool. Also, the other thing I've talked about on the show before, they still have the, um, what do you want to call it, sale going on. If you pre-order any games with the Microsoft Store, you get $10 credit to the Microsoft Store back once it ships. And if you're an Xbox Live Rewards member, you actually get 15 So I've pre-ordered like almost all my games now through the Microsoft Store, and I've got like so much money coming back to me, <laughs> which is actually yeah. really cool. And that's um, what to do with Gamers Club Unlocked, too. Right, right. Stack okay. those pre-orders up. $10 exactly. for the it next game. It adds up so much. It's really nice. Uh, and for Nintendo, real quick, we don't really have that much on Nintendo, but right now over at Toys R Us, they have buy one, get one 40% off on all Amiibo. So uh, that's it for our sales portion. Brand, do you know of any other deals going on right now to add? Uh, no, no okay. nothing I can think of. 
What about you, Mark? Anything going on over in Canada? I just saw on my Vita, and I don't know if this crosses over to, to PlayStation 4, but just before I came on, I was looking through my Vita and noticed that Square Enix has a deal on. So there's some Final Fantasy games oh, okay. and that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't really know how good the deals are, but you know, check that out. Cool. Yeah, I think it's like 50% off for you can get it's Final Fantasy 1 through you know, 9. Huh. The PS1 classic. So if you have none of those games, it's definitely worth checking them out. Awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. I noticed a lot of the PS1 classics and that kind yeah. of stuff. And it's not just Final Fantasy. So um, yeah, it looks great. Cool. Right. Cool. Yeah. And real quick before we get into our topic of the week, uh, we'll talk about what we've been playing. And Mark, I guess we'll start with you, man. What have you been playing lately? Uh, as usual, been playing Destiny. Uh, played. I just leveled up a new character, so that's uh, that's something. I, I don't know even why I did that because if you start, you know, when you start the Taken King in a month, uh, mm-hmm. there's kind of a boost to help a new character get up to, uh, you know, the high level kind of thing. Oh, so okay. um, usually I've I've been only playing with one character for you know since last year, uh, Titan. So that's been my main, and I just kind of said, you know what, I want to try out a warlock, so I did that. So I'm okay. going to save a hunter, and I'm going to start that and go straight through with the Nolan North story. Cool. And uh, see see what the changes are from the very, very start to the very, very end. But uh, it's been fun just kind of leveling up a new character and going through all that kind of stuff again. Um, what else have I been playing? What have you been playing? I'm assuming Splatoon, <laughs> right? Splatoon, yeah, yep. I played a bit of Splatoon last week, and uh, trying to still still working on uh, on Batman. I dive into that oh, one every okay. little once in a while. And uh, what else did I? You know, I I started up uh, Mutant Muds uh, for the first time in a little while. Every every we game, use so 3ds. Often, what are you playing? Uh, three 3ds. Okay, 3ds. I I love the 3d on that game. Uh, it's it's. You know, one of the, in in my opinion, one of the one of the best done versions of 3D on the 3DS, because you know the the foreground and background jumping really really works, and you can really kind of tell where you are on the 3DS. And I've, I've played it for other systems, but I always go back to that one, and uh, it's it's always a challenge because you start off and you go to some easy levels, but then you you go to those like very end levels, like the secret, like the granny levels or whatever they're called, and it's like, oh right, that, right, that's right, that's that's thing. Uh, it just kind of puts you in your place so uh yeah i've been playing that and and playing uh a bit of smash brothers um okay there's uh so there's a a, like a video game comic anime kind of everything convention uh called capercon going on here in a month and uh so we're going to be there, Colin and I, and I think we're going to be doing like a, a live show from there. And, oh, uh, wow. And, That's and we're great. going to try to work yeah, it I, in. Yeah, I know you've been promoting that at the beginning of your episodes. Yeah, yeah. And, beautiful uh, Sydney, Nova Scotia. Yeah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful Sydney, Nova Scotia. <laughs> i got to record that, man. I hate my voice in that, that ad. But, uh, I love it. Anyway, that's, uh, I thought first you were saying City, Nova Scotia. No, Sydney. But that was like Sydney, Sydney yeah. Just uh, like <laughs> Australia, only no uh, kangaroos, and it's uh, – not as as nice <laughs> uh, right, right, yeah. so yeah so we're excited for that but uh so i've been getting into split or uh, into smash brothers a bit more because they're having a tournament and i don't know if i'm going to enter or just broadcast oh, for it but cool. i at least want to know what i'm talking about if uh sure if i'm hanging around so uh, i've been playing a little bit of smash too and and downloaded uh ryu ryu however you say it uh, yeah. from street fighter <laughs> and i've been you know playing around See, with i always said ryu me too but when you click him when you click him on the game it goes ryu yeah and I'm like, i know oh, it's Ryu. I've been saying it's it wrong. Like, my it's whole trying life. to change like <laughs> twenty five years of like right. this Ryu thing being like you know drilled into my mind and always just. What else have been like getting that. wrong my whole life? I know, right? I do can- <laughs> and it's, I, I mean, you know, and and people always you know make fun of us too because we always you know we say Mario instead of Mario and you guys say Mario and I'm like super that. conflicted <laughs> uh, being right, on this right. show and and talking about Mario uh, or Mario and it's like you know when you start. <laughs> looking at these things especially if you're playing back in like nes super nes you don't get like someone telling you how to pronounce these things you, you're reading right. them in an instruction manual or seeing it like printed in like eight or 16 bits on screen and it's like <laughs> you're trying your best with your little like six-year-old hooked on phonics mind and <laughs> you know most likely right. you're gonna mispronounce something so uh sure 
Yeah, but then you you keep saying it like that for like 25 years, and then you become the 30 year old that can't say Mario right. So, right. Um, whatever. <laughs> and, you know that that's the whole reason we had you on the show today, so we can correct you. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> yep. Thanks. I love right. it. That's good. That's good. Uh, well, Brant, what about you, man? What have you been playing lately? Well, this little game called Everybody's Gone to the Rapture came out on Question. the PS4. Did you find the run button before all the review people did? Because there was yeah. a big story. All of the internet that no, like all these people reviewed the game and nobody knew there was a run button. Yes. I Well, I did not find out before, uh. but I, as I was playing it that day, I actually was looking at news and I saw, oh, okay. And then I tried it and it's weird because it takes like five to seven seconds for it to actually build up. Huh. before you're actually gaining any type of speed. And it's more That's like weird. a jog. It's not really running. Oh, okay. Which I think they have that there so you can admire the envir- environments more and everything. Sure. But um, anyway, the game... I we mean, made it's... this! Look at it! <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a reason. I mean, it is right, very right. beautiful. It's atmospheric. And it takes place in like a quaint, small English town. Um, what you do is you follow li- this light orb... There's like various ones that you can do and you can actually see scenes that happened in the past. You don't see actual people, but you see the outlines of them, which is pretty cool. Very Donnie um, Darko. Yes. Right, yeah. right. And then there's six sections. I mean, e- each section ha- is dealing with a certain person and the story is based around that person. And that's how the cuts and that's how the scenes usually fill in. And at the end, they like have this revelation or something. It seems like they're being taken away somewhere. Huh. May- maybe the heaven. I'm, it's a very interesting game. Cool. Um, my main complaint was that because your sprint is more like a jog, it is very slow. Yeah. And the environments are actually pretty big. It's pretty open ended what you can do in each section. Okay. Um, it wouldn't be so much a problem if there was more interactivity in the environments because really all you're doing is cl- clicking X just to li- um, see certain um, click on radios or phones, okay. you know, read messages that sure. way. Yeah, like and then they have on, yeah. sections where you use the six axis, which oh, okay. I, I think is unnecessary, but gotcha. I mean, it gets the job done. <laughs> but overall, um, I reviewed this game actually i thought was fantastic storytelling wise it's unlike anything else you'll really play much like gone home or something like that you gotta go be in the right mindset for it okay and then um also yeah um in preparation for metal gear solid 5 i've been playing peace walker oh okay cool. and man i can't believe i missed out on this game i mean it's a vita game right it's psp Well, it's a PSP game, oh, and okay. I'm playing play it on the Vita. Vita. Gotcha. Well, no, okay. I'm playing. I'm playing on the PS3 because I have the HD collection. Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot you bought yeah. that and said you never played it. That's right. Right. So I just thought, okay, I'm gonna play this, and yeah, it's actually a really fun, good. It's not like your typical Metal Gear game where it's very heavy-handed and scripted. It's mm-hmm. more open. Like you get to choose missions and your loadouts and. You know, like you, you use the air grapple thing to take your okay. people back to the mother base. And I guess it's going to be similar to what you can do in Metal Gear Solid 5. But um, I'm really enjoying cool. it. And it's really getting my hype up for Metal Gear Solid 5 up more. Awesome. Yeah, and I downloaded Ground Zeroes. Uh, it was the free game of the month for Xbox One, but I haven't touched it. But actually, for me, Touch what it. I've been playing... <laughs> <laughs> Come what on. I've been playing, uh, I really haven't had much game time this week. I've been super busy, but I the little game time I've had, I've played some Rare Replay. I've kind of been jumping back and forth between Cameo and Banjo-Kazooie, just trying to 100% both of those. So that's been fun. But I mean, that that's pretty cool. much it for me game-wise. I really haven't had time for much. That game... But I guess with, with that... Oh, sorry, go oh, ahead. No, that game makes me want to buy an Xbox One. Man, that's a lot of great yeah. games for for uh, a great price. It's just right. It's just sick. And it's kind you of guys, funny because now they say that Xbox has more Nintendo games than uh, Wii U does. <laughs> it has, it has yeah, more you got, N64 games than the, the Wii yeah. U Virtual Console. It's it's pathetic. It's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, well. Wow, that's saying yeah. something. But you guys should watch the um, kind of funny games cast videos oh, that they, they do on Replay? Rare Replay. Yeah, it's like okay. Colin's playing all these old the old right. ones, and that of course those games aren't very good. So, right. Yeah, I mean, they're, you yeah. know, all thirty of those games aren't going to be. That sure, great, but sure. it's just hilarious to listen to the commentary. <laughs> well, with that, guys, we're going to hop into our topic of the week, our summer game series of Mario. Hit it, Brant. 
<laughs> there we go. <laughs> I know that isn't the most popular dun, dun, pick, dun, but I love dun, that. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I think you play. <laughs> I always like the oh, underground team. Hilarious. Good choice, man. Good Me choice. Too. Yeah, yeah, good, good choice. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Uh, well, real quick, I mean, there's so many Mario games. There's so many Mario spinoffs. There, I mean, we're not going to cover everything. We're not going to cover the crazy <laughs> stuff like, you know. We have uh, gray beards. Right. <laughs> 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 like, what, what was it? Um, not to remember, like Mario is missing or like the one where Mario travels through history, like all, or Mario, you know, all those <laughs> weird ones. That. We're yeah. not going to touch those. <laughs> Mario's but time I guess machine. Real, yeah, Mario's time machine. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but man, those ga- those were PC games too. I remember playing those on PC thinking it was so weird that Mario is <laughs> on something that wasn't Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but real quick, we'll just do a brief history of Mario and just kind of, I don't know, have kind of a free flow conversation. <laughs> But July 9th, 1981 was when Mario first came out. It was, it was in the original Donkey Kong. At the time, he was called Jumpman. And he was a carpenter. He wasn't Mario yet. It actually took until uh, 1992, the following year, when Donkey Kong Jr. came out. And they named him Mario because they were mad at their landlord. Like, he was demanding money. And they said, oh, we paid you. And they kind of had, like, this, you know, this squabble back and forth. And his name was Mario. And because in Mario in Donkey Kong Jr., Mario is the bad guy. And it's the only game where Mario is ever a villain. If you guys remember, <laughs> he like kidnapped Donkey Kong and put him at the cage at the top, right? And he's got that That's whip so and he's cool. like sending those guys out. <laughs> Jeez, Mario. Right, he's, he's a bad guy. <laughs> but in 1983 is when Mario started becoming Mario. Because that's when they came up with the actual Mario Brothers. It's when they first introduced Luigi. And it was the first time they called them plumbers and that they were in New York City. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the original Mario Brothers. It was before Super Mario Brothers. But it was like, you were just on one screen. And like the flies and the crabs and the... I forget what all came out of those pipes. <laughs> so yeah, crabs and flies and then you... Had- the last crab or whatever was left like turned blue and started and going super faster. Fast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Fireballs. I played that at the 16-bit arcade oh, just recently. Really? Yeah, they had an arcade cabinet of that. How, how it's is like, that? Ben was like, "This isn't Mario. I don't remember this." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, this came before." Yeah, dude. <laughs> All that. And I, I remember when the Wii first came out in the virtual console, and I remember Brandon, my roommate. Brand, you remember Brandon? He had a Wii oh, before yeah. I did, and he was like downloading virtual console games. He's like, "Oh man, Mario's on here." And he downloaded Mario Brothers, and he's like. What is this? Like, he <laughs> thought it was Super Mario Brothers, and he was confused and didn't understand why. That super because throws it, a lot of people off. It, it does. And I remember the Mario Brothers was actually like a pack-in on like a lot of the, when they started remastering Mario games, putting them on Game Boy and Game Boy Advance and stuff, almost every single version came with Mario Brothers as like an additional game on top of it. Uh, the, uh, the Super, the, what was it, Super Mario Advanced... And then they do all that kind of stuff. Colin and I just talked yeah. about that not too long ago and how that, like, it was like Super Mario Advance 1, Super Mario Brothers 2, and then it was like Super Mario Advance 2, Super Mario World, Yoshi's yeah, Story, it was, like, it was, it was like all really, really stupid naming conventions, but they yeah. all came with that <laughs> bonus of, uh, of the original Mario Brothers. Yeah, they put it on every single one of them. It's like, put a different bonus on there. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what was cool about that is, so if I had... Super Mario Advance 1 and you had Super Mario Advance 3, we could still link up our systems and play two-player co-op in really? that Mario Brothers game. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. Learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that Mario Brothers, they had Super Mario Brothers, and that came out September 13th, 1985. I, was that a launch title with the NES? Because I, I just remember when I got my NES, I'm assuming almost 90% of the people in the world who got their NES, it was the same thing. It came with that pack-in that was Mario Brothers, or Super Mario Brothers slash Duck Hunt on one cartridge. Oh, yeah. And it came with the zapper gun, and that's how like everybody I knew how they got the NES got it that way. But um, now... The original Super Mario Brothers, like what kind of memories do you guys have with that? I, I guess, Mark, I'll start with you, man. What was your first experience with Mario? That that was my, my first, uh, the, the NES. Uh, my dad 
bought an NES and that was that's like my first gaming memory was was uh Super Mario and Duck Hunt and that was that was it man like that was like that's why I am doing what I'm doing today. <laughs> like that's <laughs> right. that's like thanks to Mario. A hundred percent, and that that's like the, still probably my favorite game. I can still go back and and play that and not be like bored with it. And just you know, I I, I love that game, and I, that's going all the way back to then. You know, it just you knew there was just something kind of magical about that. And the the controls were so tight, and it was just just perfect. I mean, it was it was a perfect game, right? And it kind of set the bar super high. So it's like you when Super Mario Brothers is the first game you play, everything else after that just seems like garbage. And you think to yourself, why isn't this as good as Mario as Super Mario Brothers? <laughs> but Brant, I know you didn't have an NES, did you? Well, you got as you guys know, I am mainly a Sega guy That's back right. in my earlier years. But for their original Super Mario Brothers, um, I remember having a friend that had that game and I always like I'd like try to sneak into his house just so I could play that game. That's how <laughs> you put on, like a ski mask, you have a crowbar and like break it into his windows. <laughs> yeah, like this nine year old kid trying to sneak in. <laughs> Oh, oh, geez. You'd be like, yeah, the, like the it, wet bandits in Home Alone, right? Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd leave their water on and flood their bases, <laughs> of course. Right, right. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, I mean, you're right. It, I mean, as far as games go, that was revolutionary. I mean, there's been nothing like that before. Um, just the secrets you could find in each level. I mean, why, I mean how they thought, of, how Miyamoto thought of this was just incredible. I mean, in in the E3 they had recently, they kind of showed when they're talking about Mario Maker how they went about designing levels. They said they would de- they would design what they thought would be the perfect level. They would draw it out on paper, and then they would scale it back to make the easier levels. So they would make the harder levels first, and then go backwards from there. And they kind of used the levels as a tutorial because when you're running on that first stage and a Goomba comes at you, your only option is to jump, and you learn you can jump on enemies. Heads, or heads that way, and you found that you could hit mushrooms, and what do they do? And they sort of taught you how to play the game just by playing it. Because, I mean, they had instruction manuals, but there wasn't really any, like, scrolling text or anything. You just, you had the control in your hand, and because it was so tight and so perfect, I mean, I don't think video games would be what they are today without Mario Brothers, because it showed you video games, but it also showed you how they were done right. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> But after that, people really wanted to Mario Brothers 2. And in June 3rd, 1985, Super Mario Brothers 2, The Lost Levels came out. And now that was just in Japan. So that was even before we even got the original Mario Brothers. So they already got two. And we want more, right? But they said, this is going to be too hard for America. <laughs> and, and, <it> so, <laughs> and they were they right. Bit, <laughs> right, they, we didn't even get that in our hands until the Super Mario All Stars collection on Super Nintendo, and it was called the Lost Levels. Like nobody even knew what it was, um, and so in September 9th of 1989, so this is quite a little bit later, Super Mario Brothers Two came out. Uh, I believe it's called Super Mario Brothers Two America in Japan, and what it was, they wanted to find something that was easier, but they needed to make something a little bit fast, and so they took a game called Doki Doki Panic. And they just kind of reskinned it with Mario characters. And a lot of those enemies in Doki Doki Panic, they kept exactly the same. So like Shy Guys and like a lot of those enemies that we have like their staples in the Mario world, they started because of Super Mario Brothers 2. And yep. uh, Mark, what do you think about Mario Brothers 2? I mean, it was it was so different from the first game. I mean, graphically, it looked a lot better. I mean, you were able to you know change characters, and it, it, there was just so much to it. You know, it's it's kind of weird. It's one of those like black sheep games, right? That it, like it was so out there and not what anyone expected. And you know, then you go back to Mario three, and it's like, oh, this is this is the sequel that everyone wanted, uh, right? But it's it's also so defining of so much stuff in the system in the in the series and you mentioned you know that's where a lot of these bad guys came from but it's also where you really learned 
that these characters are different. So, you know, Luigi in, in Super Mario Brothers and even in Mario Brothers was a, a, just a reskin, you know, a green version of, of Mario. Mm-hmm. And this this game, he kind of started to become that quirky, different guy who could do the float jump and the running in the air and all this kind of stuff. And you see that carry on, you know, he's, he's such a different, quirky, weird little character now. Uh, right. Same thing with Peach. I mean, look at Smash Brothers her you know she that's that's where the float comes from like her little dress float that's the game that that defined that aside from that i mean she's you know the the kidnapped princess so that was really the game right. that that told you how these characters act and what they do and all this kind of stuff and it's you know playing it now it really feels just out of left field just like zelda 2 does but there's so much in that game that that really helped kind of define characters later on that it's like man what would happen if if you know americans didn't suck at video games uh, <laughs> you know right. who, who knows because uh, because lost levels uh is um brutal is just yeah. yes. it, it's just a brutal sadistic version of mario one and you know there, i actually have a video on um my joystick monkey um youtube page where i actually play that i think for really the first time i've really sat down and started to play it like i I picked at it a little bit before at like friends houses but this is the first time i downloaded it myself and it was like okay i'm pretty good at super mario brothers let's try lost levels and see how far i make and uh, i had to replace the cursing with monkey noises and it's uh, there's a lot of monkey noises, so the, yeah, it's, it's right. a frustrating game. So Mario Two is uh, is really really cool, and it's it's just one of those weird little history lessons that uh, that yeah, it's just it's just really really interesting to see how it all came together and and how uh, that little weird pebble in the pond uh, causes ripples uh, you know, right. even today. So. And looking at this history of Mario, I was kind of, you know, going through and just writing down the years of when everything came out and, you know, which games came out. And every single game innovates in some way. Like you said, Mario 2, it gave all these characters, you know, these these different um, abilities and gave them these new characteristics. And Mario 3 came out. It created, like, you know, just the hidden secrets and the and, and the warp whistles and and the the flying and the the overview map everyone remembers that overview map and and there's just so many ways that game innovated yeah, they're, um and, they're and, still finding secrets in that game exactly yeah. there's I mean, they, nintendo designs their levels so well it takes people this long to find secrets in their games it's like the kojima of <laughs> that era <laughs> right <laughs> and i mean so many secrets and they showed off new power-ups and that was also when they introduced the koopalings i believe right mario 3 yeah um and so and they're they're for some reason there's this big resurgence of koopalings and they're in like everything now like they after <laughs> mario 3 i think it was mario 3 they just like disappeared for a long i guess uh, they, they, they were they, in they mario, were in world. mario world yeah after that they just kind of disappeared for a really long time yep yeah but so that game really it took what Mario Brothers did and made it better. It's one of the later games on the you know Nintendo because they're moving on to the Super Nintendo. Uh, because in um, in August of 1991 is when Super Mario World came out, so it wasn't that much later. But in between uh, Mario Three and Mario World, we had a little game uh, called. Super Mario Land. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but I remember getting that game. Yeah, for the Game Boy. I remember getting that game thinking, what is this? This isn't Mario. (laughs) He's flying like a jet plane. Yeah, you're playing like in the desert, and like there's sphinxes in the background. You're like jumping on flies' heads, and they were bombs. They would explode. And you, you know, you pilot a submarine, and it was, it was nuts. Yep. I, you know, I never had a Game Boy. I had a Game Gear, and then we went to Game Boy Color. Um, and, and I ended up, I bought that myself when I was like 13 or something like that. So, you know, I, I skipped that game and I only recently played it on the 3DS virtual console Oh, okay. and it's so different. Like it you is. go in and you think that it's going to play like a normal Mario game and then you jump on something and it's a bomb. So you can't just yep. squish it. <laughs> and then you try to throw your yeah. fireball and it acts completely differently than any other oh. fireball in any other Mario game. And you're like what am I playing? And you think you're playing exactly. like some kind of like weird Chinese knockoff, but it's an actual right. game. 
So that yeah. that game's really strange, but 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 like worth worth kind of picking up for the history. Absolutely, it was also the first game that interview introduced uh, Princess Daisy. So you weren't going after Peach in this game; you were going after Princess Daisy. So um, Mario was a so- cheater. It's <laughs> <laughs> a player. Well, hey, Right, because I mean, in Donkey Kong, he had Pauline, and then he had Toadstool, oh my. then he had Daisy, and then Toadstool became Peach. So it was just, it's all kind of crazy. Oh, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But without Princess Daisy, my wife would probably not play Mario Kart and uh, all the other Mario games, because she always plays as Daisy. <laughs> Thank but, you, Daisy, for coming in. Right, right. So in, in uh, where was I? In, in August of 1991, Super Mario World came out, and it was a pack-in for the Super Nintendo, which some consider the greatest pack-in of all time. <laughs> I, I don't know about you guys, but yeah. whatever happened to packing a game in with the system? They just don't do that anymore. Well, doesn't Nintendo still do N- that? Nintendo no. still, still does with, that. Uh, the, with the, uh, what was it for the Wii? The oh, sports. Wii Sports. Wii sports. Wii sports. And then Wii U uh, the had the, uh, had what Nintendo, was that? The Nintendo Carnival. Well, N- Nintendo, yeah, Nintendo, Nintendo Land. Land didn't come with it unless you bought like a special oh, that's edition. Because right. I had to buy it separately with mine. Okay. Because I got a launch system, but I didn't get Nintendo Land with it. I had to buy it separately. Did you? Do you have the white Wii U? I have the white one. Oh, okay, yeah. Because it came. I was gonna say because I bought a launch oh. system too, and it came with the deluxe, uh, the deluxe gotcha. model thing. See, um, I had an external hard drive, so space didn't matter to I was, me, and, and I, I was, just like my Nintendo systems white. Yeah, I was just gonna say uh, it's it's kind of funny because I I grabbed the deluxe system at launch and and put a, a hard drive on it and was like that yeah. was a waste of money. <laughs> right, <laughs> like it, it has no bonus because I I don't I I still don't think there's anything on the system memory. So um, that's hilarious. Yeah, good on you, Super <laughs> Super, <laughs> you know? Super Mario Land. That that's probably one like one of the best launch games. With the world? system oh, ever, Super it Mario has world, to yeah. be. Yeah, you mean world? Hundred yeah. percent. World. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Brent, what do you think about Super Mario World? Like, what this? Some consider this the greatest Mario game of all time. What do you think of it? Well, like I said, I had the Genesis at the time, so I wasn't playing this right as it came out. But like I said, when I come over to your house or any other friend <laughs> with a Super <laughs> Nintendo, that was right. the one game that I wanted to play. Yeah. Just because, like. It's it, it is one of the best games of all time. I mean, possibly one of the best Mario games. I mean, yeah. there's no denying that fact. It's kind of funny as Mario goes on with these games, he seems to get fatter, <laughs> and so he like his jumping and everything. It, it just feels a little floaty. He's an it feels, Italian it feels a little different plumber. But he's right, he's right. got three with different pizza. girls chasing after him. Why does he need to keep in shape? <laughs> exactly. You know? Right, right. He's a plumber and he can save the world. He can do He also has he that Yoshi he can just ride. And yeah, yeah. Right, right. Put and he also has Bob on. Hoskins playing him in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Which Rest I do not have that on my Bob list, Bob by the way, to talk about, but Super Mario Brothers the movie, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Awesomely too. Yeah. Oh, man. What's your name, Mario? What's your last name, Mario? Yeah. Mario, Mario? What's your name, Luigi? Luigi Mario? Or Luigi Luigi? No, Luigi Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Great, right? Oh, dude, so many lines of that movie are just terrible. Uh, but what about you, uh, Mark? Anything to add to Super Mario World? I mean, it's just, they they took what you knew about Mario, and, like, you had the raccoon tail in the last one, and this one they gave you the cape and made it, like, they took something simple and made it even better. Yeah, uh, you know, I always say the Super Nintendo took every idea from the NES and just made it better and perfected it. Cause after that, I mean, that's after the super Nintendo, we got into 3d stuff. So that was like, as far as 2d sprite based stuff, the super Nintendo was just perfect. And, yeah. and Mario's no exception uh, where, you know, I said super Mario brothers is probably my favorite game. Uh, but Super Mario World improved on that in every single way and is is probably my I don't I don't know. I always toss back and forth between Super Mario Brothers and Super Mario World okay. as being my favorite games of all time and it's uh 
right now I'm like having this internal struggle, like, oh, what do I say is my favorite? But they're they're right. both just so perfect. And and Super Mario World is is just another one of those games that you can just go back and play again and play again and play again. And just like Mario Three, you can always find secrets. And I find right. now, you know, I'm like, oh man, I knew how to do this when I was a kid. How do I do this? <laughs> how do I? Yeah, so I like, you, you forget. Same like, thing. Oh, like I... you lose that muscle memory. You yeah. just can't do things like you used to. Like yeah. flying with the cape again. Like how do I do this? Yeah. You, know, just, <laughs> you just you know finding. It's like oh. Okay, okay. How do I how do I get all the yellow blocks? Okay, right. how do I get the blue ones? Okay, never mind. Okay, I think this is how to, no, that's how to get the red ones. It's like, man, here's okay. So, right. Yeah, it's yeah, you know, I watched Colin go through Mario three and he's like he knows where everything is and he's he's actually I think gonna post uh kind of a speed run through it. He runs through the whole oh, game cool. without dying. That's gonna go up on our wow. YouTube channel uh soon. That's impressive. Yeah. That's very uh, impressive. Yeah, that's impressive. And yeah, he, he recorded that the other day. I think he's just working on the editing now. And, uh, you know, to, to watch him do that is just, you know, mind blowing because uh, that, that's one of his favorite games between that and, and Mega Man 2. Um, I, huh. I can't do that. <laughs> as much as I love these games, I'm like, I just don't have the time or patience to to try that and he was like yeah it took me like five tries or whatever and i was like wow man you're, you're that is, just that, like, dedicated I, I, yeah, yeah i've never done that that's very impressive yeah but uh no i always go back to the mario series and uh and world is uh, you guys nailed it i mean it's it's uh it's perfect it's awesome <laughs> well after that now this is actually my i guess i would say my favorite super nintendo game uh, in October 1995, one of the last games, you know, at least one of the later games came out on Super Nintendo, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Now, it, it, it's got the Super Mario World name stuck on it, but it's really more of a spinoff into what becomes just the Yoshi Island series. So even though it's called Super Mario World, Mark, would you kind of consider this a Super Mario game? I, I don't usually, no. I consider it more of a Yoshi game, and... I liked this game, but it did not catch me as much as just Super Mario World or Mario 1, 2, 3, anything. So this is okay. probably one of my, I, and I know people are going to hate me for this, but it's one of my least favorite of the series and least classic. Get I don't off know. our show I, I know, now. Right? And everyone <laughs> loves that game. And I, right. I, I do enjoy the game when I play it, uh, but for some reason it just, it never caught me like those other sure. games do um, it's that mario crying uh, you know i think it's the the, oh, the crying right. baby kind of the thing baby, yeah and uh <laughs> man well that's because you got hit too much man you i, I know yeah game. maybe i just suck at that game and, and can't <laughs> right, stand right. it um but i, I don't know I, I mean i like the game i i played it uh a few times and and you know always like i said always enjoy playing it but it's to me uh not super mario world sure see for me Everything in that game just feels perfect. Like the platforming is great. The secrets are awesome. It, the difficulty spike is like perfect. And I, I don't know. I just love that game. And even now, like I'll just be doing something and randomly in my head, that very first world song, that da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Like it just starts up in my head. And I just start whistling that song in my head, and I I just love Super Mario World too. <laughs> and Brand, I don't think you really got a lot of time on that on Super Mario World too, though, did yeah. you? Well, I'm like you, James. When I played it, I was really surprised and like, man, this game is a lot of fun. Like yeah. a lot of innovation went into that game. Um, I know they're re-releasing it soon, aren't they? I don't think so i think because i remember reading about some ridiculous because there's like all these theories about the naming of that game and it's like so ridiculous how many <laughs> different variations they have on it like they don't know whether they call it like a proper super mario game or just like a yoshi okay. game or yeah <laughs> but um yeah they've been striving to hit that height with that game i think in the yoshi series since which they yeah, haven't exactly been able to change. And Exactly. Jeez. For some reason, Yoshi's Island has kind of become like the how to how to put it in a, in a good way. It's kind of become like an introductory game for kids. Like kind of like what yeah. the, what's happened with the Kirby series. Like it's easy, but it's still a lot of fun. It still has all the really good platform and all the good mechanics are still there and tight, but the difficulty is just not there. Like they had Yoshi's Island, you know, and after that, I don't know if you remember Yoshi's Story, like the mm -hmm. one on N sixty four. Um, and that was just like super easy walkthrough. I mean, I yeah, still enjoyed it at fun. the time, 
But after that, I mean, they had Yoshi's Island on the DS, which was kind of a remake of the original. And they changed the babies out, and each baby had, like, a different power. Uh, like, you had Mario, Wario, Donkey Kong, and Princess Peach. And each one gave you a different ability, so that was kind of cool. But a lot of people really didn't like that game. It just it didn't flow as well as the first one. And after that, like, even new Yoshi's Island that just came out... Um, a lot of people hate that game. Like, you had a lot of hate. Because I agree, the music in it is pretty bad. And, like, probably 75% of that game is easy. But, like, the last 25% of that game, like, the last few worlds, it feels great. Like, it... it, And honestly, graphically, and with the 3D, that game is awesome. I actually really like new Yoshi's New Island a lot. And we've got Yoshi's Woolly World coming out. And... Uh, I always get my hopes up for a Yoshi game because I love Super Mario or Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island so much. I'm just hoping they capture that magic again. In some of the videos and, and gameplay things they've shown off for Yoshi's Willy World has me hopeful. But at the same time, I've read some of the reviews saying it starts off really easy again. So I'm like, ah, it's the same old song and dance. <laughs> I even find that, though, with like the new Super Mario Brothers games. Like the, right. the one for the Wii, the one for the Wii U, 3DS, DS. Like they all start off pretty easy. And it's only like you can actually even run through most of the, the main game on those ones pretty easily. Right. And it's not until you get like to the later stages and then those bonus stages that it really amps up the difficulty. So... Yeah, that kind of just seems where the whole, you know, the, not only the Yoshi series, but but also uh, the Mario series is kind of going. Right. So I'm uh, I'm actually really looking forward to uh, to Woolly World. So okay, see, might get me back into the Yoshi games, and then I'll go back and play Yoshi's Island, and I'll realize there that you, you guys are right. <laughs> <laughs> And then everything will be right with the world. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, as we said before, Nintendo's always innovating. In 1996. With the launch of the Nintendo 64, they came out with Super Mario 64. And it was like the first real 3D platformer. Um, I know other companies kind of dabble with them in the past in different places, but Mario came out and showed everybody how it was done. And that entire generation, everybody wanted to make a game like Super Mario 64 because we, we had analog sticks now, we had rumble packs now, we had all this stuff. And, I mean, it. I guess... Brent, let me ask you, do you, what do you think? Do you prefer 3D Mario games or 2D Mario games? Well, let me go back. Super Mario 64, that was like the game I wanted more than any other game I think I ever wanted in my life. Oh, I remember like, that. Yeah, I like ha I cut out pictures of the N64 in Mario, like these old like beta pictures of yeah. that game and just put them all over my floor to give my parents the hint that I wanted this for my <laughs> birthday, <laughs> which sorry. luckily I got it. Yeah, right, I, right. I yeah, I was obsessed and I actually feel for my parents cuz I was probably freaking them out <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I, do, I remember That's you how brought much the, I wanted the player's Super guide Mario to school and you would like read it like during class and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I was just obsessive over Mar Mario 64. It was like any unlike anything and the game for the most part lived up to all that. I mean, it was great. I and 3D games after that, for a while, it took them, you know, a good amount of time to actually catch up to what that game was able to achieve. Right. But um, going back to your question, I now prefer the 2D ones, okay. I think. I think those just are better overall games. Um, Mario Galaxy, and I'm sure we'll get to that, yep. you know, opens up a whole other, hey, these games might be better, but yeah. And I also think you probably like the 2D versions because they're easier to play with your kids, right? Because, I mean, it's easier to show a kid a game that just has the D-pad and two buttons versus trying to get their heads to wrap around an entire 3D world and multiple, you know, game mechanics. Right, and Jay, yeah, you bring up a good point. I mean, we've been going over the new Super Mario Bros. Wii game. Yeah. And, yeah, Eli and I have, 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 have had so, a lot of fun with that. So, yeah, that definitely has something to do with that love for t the 2D games. Sure. Hey, what about you, Mark? I mean, are you more of a 2D Mario guy or a 3D Mario guy? Uh, usually, if I, if I have some spare time and I feel like playing a Mario game, I'll usually go back to the 2D ones. Okay. Like um, the older ones. Yeah, the older ones. Like the ones. NES? Yep. Okay. Um, but I, I do love the, the 3D ones too. And, and 64 
I mean, really, like graphics can get better and all that kind of stuff, but you, you can still go back and play that, and it still stands up so well. And you know, I don't. You said you were playing like Banjo Kazooie and that kind of stuff on Rare Replay, and and yeah. a lot of those games don't stand up as well, like Donkey Kong sixty four, right? Uh, just yeah. just doesn't hold up. But you can go back and play Mario, uh, you know, Mario sixty four, and and it it works. I mean, it looks a bit dated now, and and that's the. Yeah, I guess the charm. downfall of uh, of of three D, but but also as to the charm. But I, you don't get that problem with with uh, with the two D games, you know, like the the sixteen bit sprites in in Super Mario World still look amazing, and and you know, um, definitely. But yeah, sixty four. I mean, it, it's it's uh, it was a fantastic game, and it really it showed how to do a three D platformer, and. Uh, and everyone realized it was perfect and stopped making 3D platformers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm more of a 3D Mario. Like, I used to love 2D Mario. All about 2D side-scrollers and even games that come out now, like the Rayman games, things like that. I do really enjoy 2D platformers because uh, that was all about platformers, Brand. I mean, you knew that was like oh, my yeah. go-to. You platform that, name. Right. That, that, I just, that's all I played. But more recently, I really enjoy the modern... 3D Mario games like Galaxy. Um, it's just, it, I, I don't know. I like, I, I feel like it gives me more opportunity to be creative where in the 2D, you're just running left to right. But in this one, I mean, you can run in full 3D space. I just feel more open and, you know, have more opportunity. I just really like that a lot. Um, and actually with Super Mario 64, after that, it, it wasn't until 2002 when Super Mario Sunshine came out, Sunshine. a lot of people got really mad at this game. This is this kind of reminds me of what happened to Wind Waker. People got really mad at this. They they had in their minds, I want Super Mario 64 too. That is all I want. And then they came out with uh, Super Mario Sunshine. And they gave Mario a water pack so he could spray water. And like they added this new mechanic. And a lot of people really didn't like it. Uh, but now people are going back saying, we got to get a remaster of this on Wii U. We got to get a remaster of this on Wii U. And people like really like Super Mario Sunshine, especially those bonus stages where you lost your water pack and you had to like play it like a Mario 64 game. Um, and honestly, I really like Sunshine a lot. A lot of people hated on that game, but I really liked it. Yeah, it was that, that was a good game. And Brant, I don't think you ever really got a chance to play it because by that time no. you had moved on. You were a PlayStation guy, and Nintendo was just in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Not all the way, but yeah, I never played that. I played a little bit. Yeah, but right, it, w- it would have been something I would have, you know, probably enjoyed. But it's a product of the time, my friend. Right, right. Well, actually, because Super Mario World, the last two D Mario game, uh, Super Mario World Two, I'm sorry, came out in, in 1995. And they thought, we need to bring side-scrolling Marios back. So in 2006, so 11 years later, they came up with new Super Mario Brothers on the DS. And they brought back this, this 2D Mario. And it was a hit. People loved it. These kids that had never grown up really with a 2D Mario game got to play it on the DS. And it really was a great game for portable because the 2D Marios are more like get to point A to point B. You're not exploring. You're not running around. I mean, you're just kind of trying to quickly get through levels. Um, and actually, the new Super Mario Brothers for DS, the original one, I never really owned it. I never got around to playing that one. I didn't play new Super Mario Brothers until it came to the Wii in 2009. Mark, did you get a chance to play new Super Mario Brothers on the DS at all? Yeah, I did. Uh, it's If you've played any of the new Super Mario Brothers games, you know exactly what it was. Right. That's that's really all I can say. That's I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're great games. Um, they're... They're, you know, a little bit more simplistic than what we've been accustomed to with the 3D Mario sure. games. And and nowadays, like, you know, if I'm picking up a new Mario Brothers games or, or Mario Brothers game, I want I want Galaxy. I want Mario 3D World, 3D right. Land. Those games are, are amazing. I've put so many hours into uh, 3D World and 3D Land. Uh, Galaxy 1 and 2, I, I played uh, to death. But the new Super Mario Brothers games are really great, especially now where you can play them with, with multiple people. Um, right. But the, the, the DS game, you know, proved that there was still some life in, in 2D Mario games, so that that was kind of neat to see. Um, 
but you know if you if you've played any of the other games in the series you you really know what they set the groundwork with uh on the on the 3d or the the ds version right and i think that talking about them being more simplistic them getting easier a lot of this had to do with the rise of the casual gamer during the ds wii era because that's when a lot of like grandparents and little kids and like they were all experiencing video games for the first time, you know, and it's like we have to make something easier, something that they can play. And honestly, it worked because they sold, I can't tell you how many copies of these Mario games. People loved them. But at the same time, because they were doing 2D and 3D Mario games at the same time, if you look in the past, all these Mario games are like two, three years apart from each other. There was always a good gap in between. So when they came out, it was a big deal but starting with new super mario brothers on the ds and six then we have mario galaxy in 07 then we had new super mario brothers wii in 09 then we had super mario galaxy 2 and 10 then we had new super mario brothers 2 and 12 we had new super mario brothers u and 12 and we had super mario 3d world in 13 i know it's a lot of games all at one time but wow. it was like boom 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 Every single year, they were alternating between 2D and 3D Mario. And I think people really started getting burned out on Mario games. Yeah, I think they were trying to, you know, switch things up, obviously. But, you know, there's only so much (laughs) the same platforming you can do before you need to innovate. Right. I mean, although every single Mario game, they do something a little bit differently. Like Galaxy, they added gravity. And in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. That was a big difference. Yes. And like New Super Mario Bros. Wii, like Mark was saying, they added multiplayer. It was the first time you could play Mario Bros. and you could all play at the same time, which was crazy. (laughs) Uh, Now, Mario. Could have been dumb better, but. True. I mean, well, it. If you played with two or three people, it was good. You added that fourth person, it was just pure chaos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and one thing I never understood, you had Mario, Luigi, and two Toads. They could have easily done something better than two Toads. Like, honestly. <laughs> I mean, they could have had Wario. They could have had, I mean, they could have had Princess Peach. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff they could have done, which actually... Get your Toad one, love. <laughs> right, but once you get to Super Mario 3D World... Um, if I remember right, every character plays a little differently in that one, right? And so they took that idea of Mario Brothers 2 on the NES, and then they took the idea of new Super Mario Brothers on the Wii, and they kind of mashed them together. And so you had like this 3D Mario game where everybody had their own character, but everybody played differently. Yeah, and because it was multiplayer, I mean, it wasn't... Everyone was kind of hoping and expecting for Galaxy 3, basically, yes. or, or something yes. like that. But this was... You know, it wasn't full 3D. It was it was an isometric 3D, so that the camera kind of stayed. You you had very limited movement of the camera, uh, right. which which worked. I mean, you you obviously couldn't have four people trying uh, to move the camera wrestling the and, and trying to move the camera <laughs> at the same time. So right. so they they kind of had to do that. But we we really haven't had a full Mario 64 Sunshine Galaxy style game. Since Galaxy 2. Yep. Which yeah. was in, and honestly, Galaxy 2, a lot of people say that was the better game. To me, I thought Galaxy 1 was a better game. I mean, Galaxy 2 came out in 2010. See, even in, James. Right. Even in... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll... Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just... I'm the complete opposite. I don't know what it is, and I'm, I might be the only person in the whole world that thinks this way, but I do not like Galaxy 1 at all. <laughs> but I really like Galaxy 2, and I I can't pinpoint why it's like that. I, maybe it's tighter in 2, and all the annoying nuances in um, 1 are gone. But right, right. It's really strange. Like, I really like number 2, but I can't... I almost couldn't finish number 1 just because... But you did like, finish it, so that's... Good. Yeah, I did finish it. But what about you, Mark? Are you a Galaxy One or Galaxy Two guy? Uh, Galaxy Two, but only by a little bit. Gotcha. I just, I just found you know Galaxy One was was so great, and I found Galaxy Two just took every single thing to that next level, sure. and uh, and just kind of perfected it, made it tighter, streamlined the story a bit. Then you got sure. like those like you know the Luigi stages, trying to collect all the stars. I got really wrapped up in two. Uh, right. So I don't know. I don't know if it was technically a better game, but I found they had a lot of fun with the stages. There was a lot of variety, and uh, I I just got really really caught up in that. But I I loved both of those games. They're both just classics. 
Sure. And I guess for me, <clears throat> I'm a little the opposite because I like Galaxy 1 because it had like that, you, you could run around that planet to get to the different stages, which reminded me a lot of Super Mario 64. We're in Super Mario Galaxy 2 to me because, well, first of all, it's just an over, overworld map and you kind of move the planet to the different stages. And yeah. it just felt more like an expansion pack to one versus its own unique game. So I guess by that time I was kind of burned out a little bit. And so I just, I don't know why, I just like Mario Galaxy 1 better. Because it had that unique, like, experience. Where I felt like Mario Galaxy 2 wasn't as unique because it did exactly what Mario Galaxy 1 did. Mm, I get that. So, I yeah, but, you know, that's just me. But I guess real quick to cap off this topic, um, unless you guys have anything else to add, what do you guys want to see? Because you know they're working on something for the NX. What does the next Mario game have to do to win people over again? Like, what innovation are they going to do that's going to kind of, you know, take Mario to the next level? I mean, what do you think, Mark? Oh, mercy. That's a, that's a loaded question, uh, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They'll have to go to 4D. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I, I think as much as Nintendo loves to innovate, I think, I think with the NX, they might have to step back from innovating a bit and maybe for once give people what they want and that that kind of sounds weird because nintendo is also really good at giving us <laughs> what we don't know that we want uh, right. like yeah. like splatoon when i first heard of splatoon i had no interest on in it at all right. and uh even the first time i played the demo i was just like yeah maybe i'll pick at this and then i got the game and was was instantly just hooked and, and crazy right. about it and uh and and Smash Brothers is the the same kind of a, a just a ridiculous idea that shouldn't work and is is one of my favorite series of all time, um, but with with a new Mario game and and I think with NX in general, Nintendo's finding, I think with the Wii the Wii U, that they can't always be the weirdest thing out there, you know it. it it really paid off for them with the Wii. The motion controls caught on. But if yeah. you look at the the attach rate for software on the Wii, uh, it, it wasn't really spectacular because, you know, grandmothers and, and grandparents and moms and dads and, you know, your your dog's hairdresser <laughs> all bought the system. <laughs> right, right. Um, but, they, but they only bought it for Wii Sports and, you know, Netflix. And I, you know, I know like, uh, like Loren, my, my fiance's mother owns a Wii and it's a Netflix machine. I don't think it's ever been played ever. Uh, I think it, it <laughs> you know, so it, it's, um, except maybe when I was over, uh, but it's, it, you know, so it's one of those kind of things where I think with the NX, they need to make sure that it's a, as powerful as the Xbox one and the PS4, or if not more powerful, or at least up to there. Sure. Um, but I don't know if the controller can be quite as crazy uh, as as it was with the the Wii U. So I would really love to see. This is a long way to get to a a, a simple thing, but I would really right. love to see like a Galaxy Two or Galaxy Three, like a, a return to a full, real 3D Mario game. Uh, I don't want an isometric view as much as I loved uh, Mario 3D Land and Mario 3D World. I loved those games. Um, but they still didn't feel right. They still felt like a halfway gap between a proper um, Super Mario Galaxy 3 or Super Mario Sunshine 2 or Super Mario 64 times 2 times sure. 3, whatever yeah. it is. You know, yeah. like that that kind of fully explorable 3D world that that is just so, so Mario. And, right. uh, and so cool. And I, I think, you know, I think uh, that would make a lot of hardcore gamers really happy. I think it would make a lot of casual people kind of take a look and go, I kind of remember like playing Mario 64 and McDonald's when I was, like, you know, 12. Uh, let's, right. let's try I'm that again. That McDonald's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Our McDonald's had like N64s, like they had Wave Race, but like they had the N64s like straight through like the GameCube days too. So you'd go there and like the, right, the thumbsticks right. would be like falling off and they'd have like, <laughs> you know, 14 yeah, pounds true. of like kids grease, <laughs> grease. and chicken nuggets right, all over right. the place. Like um, they're just nasty, but uh, <laughs> you know, um, anyway, yeah, but I, I really think that, that that's kind of what they need. I think it's, it's a step back and, 
they can innovate the games and they can add cool things to the game without being super weird. Sure. To to kind of put people off like like I find the gamepad does for a lot of people. Um, right. So I would like to see a game that that controls with like a pro controller or whatever they use with the NX, and uh, and that just looks really good, plays really good, lets you explore, lets you have that kind of fun and excitement that you had in in Mario sixty four and the Galaxy games, and uh, and that's what I want. Awesome. Well, Brant, I mean the you know you haven't really had hands on time with you know much of the newer mario stuff but do you have anything to add to that like anything else you'd like to see on top of what mark's already told us yeah did you guys watch the um unreal engine of mario 64 yes, yes. yeah that looked pretty <laughs> darn <laughs> incredible um i didn't think mario could i mean with they need cartoony graphics i guess for the right. game but that sort of opened my eyes to man if this if they could make something on par with the PS4 or Xbox One mm-hmm. it would be pretty amazing and make that like in an open world setting maybe oh, um, or okay. like you know Legend of Zelda um Ocarina of Time when you first enter the field and you can go wherever you know at the time it was monumental Maybe they should try, you know, something along that count, like the different lands you can see in the distance, like here's the lava land and, you know, it's the snowy mountains up there and make it like totally open. Yeah. I mean, that would be pretty awesome. And I, it would, of course, be 3D. So, right. But that would actually get my interest peaked back up again in Mario. Okay. Like for me, I. Well, what you said earlier, Mark, Nintendo gives us what we don't realize we want. And they always surprise. And honestly, I hearing all of what you said and all of what Josh says, like there's just so many ideas out there that could be done. I do agree. I would like to have Mario play with a regular controller again. I mean, I, Galaxy was great. Um, but I would like to have, like you said, a 3D Mario that goes back to its roots, you know, back to what made 64 great, but also having that little Nintendo twist on it, kind of like, you know, whether it be in the, you know, in the galaxies or whether, you know, you have a water jet pack or whatever they do. I like them doing what I know, like a classic Mario game, and then just throwing something else into it to kind of, you know, spice it up a little bit. So hopefully we'll do something like that. You never know. <laughs> there's, there's a fine line between innovation and gimmick. And I think right, the, the, right. Wii, yeah. the Wii hit innovation. The Wii U fell more on the gimmick side. Sure. I think we need more innovation. Right. Well, uh, Amen. Mark, thank you for joining us on the show. Hopefully you had a great time tonight. Awesome yes, time, man. I, I <laughs> love talking about Mario. I, I'm sitting here with a giant grin on my face. I want to just go like play every Mario game. I want yeah. yeah. to go downstairs and get my weed dust right, right. right. Yeah, exactly. No, thank <laughs> you, you guys for having me so much. That was, that was really fun. Awesome. Well, kind of let our listeners know, I know you talked about it at the beginning of the show, but for everyone that's stuck around till the end. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Go ahead and... You know, let our listeners know where can they find you. Uh, so you can find uh, you can find us on the Warp Whistle podcast. You can, we're on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, you can also find us on our YouTube page. Uh, just search the Warp Whistle podcast. Uh, we're also on Facebook. If you want to follow everything that we do, the best place is probably uh, our Facebook page because we post everything up there. And you can follow us on Twitter at the underscore Warp Whistle. Uh, and we're always posting stuff, uh, like I said, on Facebook and in the Geek Guru group. I know, like, you know, oh, the, yeah. the Life of Gaming guys are always posting stuff there. Uh, DNA, uh, the, the Geek Guru, you know, Bobby, everyone's, uh, kind of posts all their stuff there. So that's a great place <laughs> to get everything all in one, uh, one tight, clean little package. So, uh, so that's a good one too. Awesome. Well, and honestly, if you guys haven't listened to Warp Whistle yet, check it out. It's an awesome show. I mean, I love Nintendo, and Brant, I know you're not a big Nintendo guy, but even you yeah, are Yeah, that's the, the show. one Nintendo podcast I will listen to. <laughs> 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 Thanks, man. That, I that endorse. Means a lot. <laughs> yep. The, awesome. the Brant stamp of yes. approval. I that's agree. right. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. You just see my Wait. face with the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Brent, send me that picture. I will put that on my, the my uh, I'll put that oh, on my Facebook awesome. page for sure. <laughs> Well, Brant, let people know where can people find you at, man. <laughs> uh, I'm, okay, I'm at minus the brand on Twitter. Um, 
I'm writing for the PlayStation Enthusiast.com. I just wrote a review for Everybody's Gone to, to the Rapture, which I talked about. So yep. you can check that out. And um, yeah. Awesome. That's- and you That's guys it. know you can find me on Twitter at James plus 12. Um, I'm also on Xbox and Twitch Jamester 0722. So make sure to look to check that out. And you can find me uh, writing on theworkprint.com. And I was recently, as I mentioned earlier in the show, on the Digital Nerd Advocates uh, podcast. They actually did a podcast on Nintendo themselves this week. So you can make sure to check that out. You know you guys can find the Life of Gaming podcast on Facebook. So make sure to like us on there. We're also on Google Plus, so go in there and you know plus one us and follow us on there. We're on Twitter at Life of Gaming Pod, and you can always find our podcast on iTunes. Make sure to go on there and rate us; that'll be awesome. And we're on SoundCloud and the Microsoft MP3 store. So make sure to find us in all those places. Oh, and our YouTube page. Don't forget to check out our YouTube page. We put Let's Plays up on there. Uh, we also put the podcast up and audio version of the podcast up there as well. So. Um, Hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. We've got a few more weeks of our summer game series coming up, so make sure to stick around. And until next time, guys, we are out. Bye.